Hey, uh, first off, how's John doing, man? He's good, yeah, he was like, he could have come to the presser, but yeah. you know, we just said, look, he's disappointed and um, doctors just want to make sure he's okay, but fine, yeah. Mm. What did he tell you after the, with the, fight, the corner stop and everything? Um, nothing really, he obviously had a nightmare start. Mm. So he got dropped in the second round, which was a, uh, wasn't a heavy knockdown, but mm. still was dropped. And then the second knockdown was balance, but it was a knockdown because yeah. it was still a punch. Yeah, so I noticed that. So he just like squared his feet, and he, yeah. you know, but he wasn't hurt then. Mm. He was hurt with the last knockdown. The last it was like a delayed reaction, hit him on the, the, the temple. Mm. And, and that was really the, the one that caused the concern to the corner mm. to stop the fight. But, you know, after those two knockdowns, you know, I thought that... I gave him the first round. I thought he won fifth and sixth or sixth and seventh. Mm. But with the two knockdowns, he was miles behind. So you have to be more aggressive. Mm. And the way that he was thinking that he could have a chance to take Mungir out was by catching and countering on the ropes, which is very dangerous to do against a volume puncher. Mm. You know, you want to really try and push Mungir back. And, you know, but he was trying to catch and throw. And I thought it was a brave performance, but Mungir impressed me. He did, did. you know. Yeah, he did, because I think... Look, the reality is he's never really beaten anyone mm. to get to where he is at, at this weight class. Yeah. You know, Liam Smith was a good win, but that was a light middle. Derevenchenko is like a faded middleweight. And John's a good, you know, he's an established super middleweight. So that was by far the most impressive victory of his career so far. And I like him. I think he's exciting. I think he's great for the sport. I think he's got a great work rate. I think he's exciting. Can he beat Canelo? Can he beat Benavidez, you know? We love the Belanga fight, Mexico against Puerto Rico. If Edgar comes through, you've got Pacheco there. They're not going to fight him because he's young and, you know, you can't really gain a lot from fighting him just yet. Um, but he's very exciting. I think he's going to be in really exciting. Listen, him against Canelo is a great fight. Like, I think it's an all-action fight. Now, at this point of John's career, where do you think he goes from here? Did he mention anything about maybe thinking about... Yeah, it might be it. Yeah, might be it. Might be. I mean, like, I think that John, you know could have won a world title in that Callum Smith fight. It was a very close fight. Um, but also, he's also boxed to the levels and the platforms that maybe he always dreamed of doing. Canelo Alvarez in Guadalajara, Jaime Munguia, he's made a lot of money in the last three or four fights, beat Daniel Jacobs, beat Zach Parker. He's had a great run. And I think it all comes down to desire. You know, we saw with Callum Smith the other week. After the fight, I would have actually thought he'll retire, but he Callum. actually, yeah, but he actually, he's getting quite excited about other fights. And, and if you've got that excitement and that fire, mm. and physically you're okay, it's, oh, I, I quite like the idea of carrying on. Mm. Um, you know, the, 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 the knockdown in the second round, you know, would the John Ryder pre-Canelo have been dropped there? I don't know, but he trained well. You know, he gave it everything and mm. there's no excuses, but you know, we will always want to see a fighter leave the spool one, physically well, two, with as much money as possible. And he's kind of reached that stage where he's got his house, got his money. Like, you don't want to see him take punishment. And, yeah. you know, it was, a, it was a good performance from Mungia. You were there when uh, Canelo fought uh, John. Mm. How would you compare how Canelo fought uh, John compared to how Jaime looked I think, tonight? I think Canelo is heavy-handed. Yeah. And I think he's he has heavier hands than, than Jaime Mungia. Mm. I think he's technically better. I think his IQ is much higher. But Jaime has one thing on his side, which is youth. Although he's 43 and 0, which is quite bizarre. Like, he, he's young and fresh. And he's been in a couple of wars. But Canelo is not young and fresh anymore. You know, I just said to Pedro in the changing room, I said, I think that's a competitive fight. He didn't agree with me. He thinks Canelo wins the fight quite comfortably. Mm -hmm. But if I'm Canelo Alvarez, really, you've got two fights. Munguia and Benavides. Or Charlo. And if I'm, and it, but if I'm Canelo Alvarez, I know who I'm choosing for money, and that's Jaime Munguia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how competitive of a fight is that for uh, Canelo at this point? Oh, I think it's competitive because yeah. Jaime's fresh. He's got a lot of heart. Yeah. Like, and it's you know you saw in the, the Golovkin fight, mm. Golovkin just didn't have the desire really, and Jaime will. Mm. He'll give it everything, yeah. and that's why it'll actually be a great fight. Mm. Um, and if they don't get that fight made. I want to make Jaime Munguia against Edgar Belanga. You know, so, so, see, if Belanga can win on February 24th, impressively, yeah. Mexico, Puerto Rico, that's a big fight. Do that yeah. MSG, it'll fill the place up. Yeah. You know, so I think that's a good fight. And I would imagine that's kind of a, not kind of an easier fight to make as opposed to maybe... Maybe, none, none of them are easy. But, but you know, listen, as, as a 
an, an in-house in, yeah, in, in network industry yeah. opinion of Belanga sorry Mungia against Canelo yeah. you've got Golden Boy and Canelo and Reynoso and like yeah 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 so but Canelo is still all about business yes. and he could look at that now and go I like that fight mm. if that's a big fight no. I'll take it because mm-hmm. I think I win so. how is um, David Benavides playing all this in your opinion yeah it's a great fight yeah. I mean Munguia Benavides great fight mm-hmm. Belanga Benavides Belanga Munguia like they you know they should all fight each other yeah do you favour one or the other in that fight Benavides like is very good Morel's a, Morel's a big problem yeah. Morel's the guy that's not going to get the fights because there's no value in fighting. Yeah, exactly. you know, a bit like at the moment, Diego Pacheco, yeah. who I think is the future of the division, but no one's going to be calling him out because he's just a young kid who's mm-hmm. 20 and 0, mm-hmm. and he's dangerous. Mm-hmm. So we've got to build his brand, build his profile, so, so that when you fight Diego Pacheco, you get paid yeah. for the risk. So he's another guy that's going to come strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, now we'll see if Belanga can beat McCrory on February 24th. Uh, any updates, any movement on uh, Devin's next fight? No, I mean, you know, I sp- spoke to Ryan last night just briefly, just just a message. Yeah. And I said, timing's good because I'm seeing Devin and Bill in Vegas all next week. Mm. And that's the fight to make. Like, you want a big pay-per-view on April 20th. Tell me the other options out there. You're not going to fight, obviously, no tank rematch. Tia Fimo's away with the fairies. Um, <laughs> Why do you say that? Yeah. Well, it's just unreal. Like, imagine trying to do a deal with Tia Fimo. I mean, like... Anyway, so uh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, you know, who else is there out there for him? And that's the fight, Devin Haney against Ryan Garcia, and we can make it next week. Yeah, it's that, that quickly, huh? I believe so. Yeah, but uh, it's also a risky fight. Risky fight for both, it's what you want, isn't it? I mean, it's what makes it a great fight, it's a big yeah. fight, big fight. It seems like, you know, the business of boxing is make the most money you can and I then think, go into the but risky I think, fights. I think Ryan, if, if, it, if Ryan feels the deal's right, yeah. I think he'll take the fight. Mm-hmm. I know Devin will take the fight, so mm-hmm. fingers crossed. Uh, any movement on uh, Better Beaver and Bivol? Uh, how close? No, I mean, we've signed. Yeah, you um, signed. Bivol's, yeah. yeah, we've signed with Bivol. And then uh, negotiating with, with Better Beaver, which I believe will be imminent, and I'll leave it up to His Excellency to announce. Uh, around what day, is that accurate? The, what was reported or, uh, after, what was it, like June, July? Around yeah, that? around that day, yeah. Uh, it will be in Saudi? Yes. Yeah, and the winner uh, against Jai, is that? I think that's what His accurate? Excellency wants. So. Yeah. Jai's ready. We'll see what happens with Bivol Better Beer first. What other fights has he mentioned to you? Loads. Like what? I'm not telling you. Why not? Because it's private conversation. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eddie. Uh, All right, with that, man, I appreciate the time. Thank no you. No worries. Cheers, mate.